Senior Report thanks Edmund Besh of Bristol Burgess Insurance Agency, 65 East Main Street, Westfield, for his generous grant to provide news to seniors. Funding is provided by a grant from New York State Senator Catherine M. Young, representing Western New York's 57th District with a local office in Olean. Funding for Senior Report is provided in part by a grant from Andrew Goodell, Assemblyman for the 150th District of the New York State Assembly. Dave Cass and Rick Newell provide funding on behalf of the Lakeview Hotel and Restaurant at the Docks, located on Water Street, near the lake, in Mayville. Senior Report with Reed Powers thanks Westfield's Schultz Chevy for a generous grant to inform seniors of important news. Over 50 years of service to Westfield by Chevrolet, Schultz Chevy across from the school. The physicians of Jamestown Primary Care are happy to sponsor the Senior Report. From the Access Channel 5 television studio in Mayville, it's Senior Report with Reed Powers. Senior Report is broadcast live throughout northern Chautauqua County on Saturday morning from 9 to 10 a.m. each week. Call in and share a thought, make a comment, ask a question, or simply wish someone a happy birthday on Chautauqua County's only live call-in senior program. Since 1995, Reed has been bringing viewers hundreds of interesting guests informing the community on a variety of subjects. Here's the host of the show, Reed Powers. And what a beautiful day we have here in Chautauqua County. I'm, uh, I, I'm not on right yet. I wanted to mention this guy before I move on, uh, Doug Spaulding. Everybody knows Doug Spaulding. He's been in our county for years. He, he gave a huge amount of his life to teaching young people and uh, he's been on our program regularly. He gave of his time, and he is just a, a, a big loss to our county. Um, I used to call him the old man and make, make fun of the fact that he's so old, but he actually is about my age. <laughs> and uh, his lovely wife, Linda Spaulding, is also a great contributor to our county. She works with the county in finding jobs for seniors and other people. And I just uh, send our condolences out to Linda and the whole family. Uh, the Backstreet Boys, um, his uh, grandson was one of those. He was the lead, lead singer, as a matter of fact. Uh, is that, that's the group, isn't it, Randy? Yeah. Plus Aaron Carter is his other grandson. And Aaron Carter, his other grandson, another grandson, is also very well known in the rock business. So, Doug, happy passing. I know you'll be in the right place. Another great guy that's, I don't have the obituary here for him, a big loss to our community, especially the Westfield community, was Ray Lawson. Ray Lawson was the, fire, uh, the chief of the fire department in Westfield for a long time. <clears throat> he uh, served as a, a, every role, and he uh, gave so much of his time in his life. The, the Ox Roast, which is very familiar and very, uh, very uh, popular all over the county, they had a huge party. Uh, fire, fire department ran a huge Ox Roast, and it was down in Ottaway Park. It is in Ottaway Park, and Ray did everything from soup to nuts. And imagine the ordering, the beer, the the licensing, the, uh, all the stuff you have to have for something like that. He did it all. He actually gave up his time, vacation time to go down there and uh, set it up and with the help of others. And then he actually brought his uh, uh, trailer in and stayed in the trailer the last couple of days to make sure nobody came in and messed with uh, all the uh, setup. Uh, Ray has given to the county also. He served on a number of boards and he is just going to be a tremendous loss. And uh, Felicia, his wife, has been very a big contributor also. And again, we send our condolences to a great, great firefighter, Ray Lawson. Got a great show coming up. We're going to talk about money, money, money. There is an organization in the, in the county called the Northern Chautauqua Community Foundation. 
NCCF for short. <laughs> they uh, collect dough, get uh, people to donate, push for last philanthropy, and uh, give large grants to uh, many, many different organizations, nonprofit in Chautauqua County. And they're going to be here to talk a little bit about what, what they do, how you can get some dough, and uh, where the money comes from and where it goes. So we'll be right with you with Diane Hannum and Ida Klan. Klan is correct. Okay, not Klan, but Klan. <laughs> I'll remember that now. Okay, in the meantime, uh, crazy things going on all over the, all over the nation. Uh, of course, the Obama thing is, at this point, uh, we don't know what the actual settlement was, and it's not a settlement, it's a stopgap for a few months. Then they'll have another cliffhanger, and then another cliffhanger, and another cliffhanger, and each one will be more and more dramatic and drastic and, and uh, death-defying when they solve it. Adding new taxes, of course, uh, each time to the middle class, uh, secretly in uh, secret conference rooms and after dark, late at night, and this is the way it goes, they, ladies and gentlemen. Your Congress, which has not granted seniors a uh, cost of living COLA that was fair for, for 10 years at least. Uh, we were about uh, 10 years ago, we got a dollar. We're getting 50 cents worth now in our, in our food basket uh, from our Social Security due to the fact that they, they say, oh, there's only 1%. They've got their phony federal figures, the so-called core inflation, which is baloney. They adjust that up and down every time you turn around to make sure there's no, no inflation shown, which is just nonsense. We got 1.7% this year. Uh, and incidentally, that's been gobbled up by the price of tomatoes, which has gone up another 25%. Uh, just, you, you're getting nothing out of your Social Security, guys, and little by little, that's how they're doing away with it. No cola, no cola. You don't keep up with inflation, and before long, it'll be, you'll be able to go out and buy a, one basket of groceries with your month's Social Security, and that'll be that. Get after your congressman. Hello, Tom Reed. He's your congressman among other people, and of course, uh, there's a lot of, lot of action out there that's got to be taken care of, and you've got to do it. You've got to write in, call in, and raise a rumpus. Otherwise, you're going to disappear, and you're going to wind up eating this stuff. I've got a little bit of it right here. When you live in your children's basement, this is what you'll be eating, what they ate during the, uh, uh, during the uh, Great uh, Depression, cat food. Yeah. Enough said. I think that the important thing in life to remember is, however, that we live in Chautauqua County, and as the French came through here, they said, we're, we're, we're surely in the Garden of Eden. What a place to live. It's beautiful. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Nicole Malakowski, a U.S. Uh, hello there. <laughs> uh, I've, got a, I've got a couple of items here. Just, no, I don't think I'm going to tell you. We, we're running late here. We'll just run right along. I'd like to hear from John. He's got some important things to say. Doc Hamels will be on after I give you a uh, very short public address, uh, public uh, message. And here you go. This is just for you. I think we'll have a public service announcement. <laughs> <coughs> Counting down, 10, 9, 8. <laughs> for others, it may have just been a summer job. But for me, it was training. Now I'm an Air Force pararescuman, and my job is to save lives. Make the right choices today and be ready for the challenges tomorrow. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. There you go, guys. Uh, we have with us uh, John Hamels, and John shoots from the hip. I'm telling you right now, here he is. Good morning. Good morning, Reed, and good morning, ladies. Welcome to the show, and good morning to all of you that are watching this morning and throughout the week. Um, that's... <laughs> That's my uh, fan music, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> the gre I think the gremlins, the gremlins are in there working today. <laughs> Reed, I, I, you start out on a sad note, and I'm going to kind of keep that going here a bit. Uh, I've got a couple things to share, and I'm going to call this two, acts, two Random Acts. That's going to be the little title of my talk today. Uh, a week ago tomorrow, I got a call about 
8.30 in the morning from my son down in Florida. And he said that uh, he just heard that his father-in-law had been hit by a car. And so I oh boy. Well, long story short, by about 9.30, it was discovered that he had been killed. And his name was Bill Thomas. Now, nobody here in Chicago County probably knows Bill, but this is where I'm going with all this. He was walking down a sidewalk in Florida, Titusville area, with a friend on the sidewalk, 8 o'clock in the morning. And a car comes out of nowhere, swerves, hits him, and kills him. 24-year-old drunk driver, 8 o'clock in the morning. Now, why do I bring this up? Random act. Who would have thought? They actually know the boy. He's a neighborhood kid, probably a good kid. Who knows? But we've been talking about gun control. We've been talking about the sensationalism of every time something happens out in our, in our country, whether it's at the school, whether it's at a church or a movie theater and so forth, about guns and so forth. All right. In 2010, 10,228 people were killed in alcohol-impaired driving cases, crashes. 1.4 million people that year were arrested for DWI. One person in every 48 minutes is killed in an alcohol-related accident. We talk about gun control, we've talked about alcohol control and so forth. It really all comes down to pretty much personal um, control. What are we doing? What are we teaching our kids? And what's the message? And I've been involved with a group called CASA over the years, over or CASA, excuse me, over in um, Jamestown, who really works hard with folks to try to educate young people and, and even young adults about the, the problems of alcohol and so forth. But the point I'm making here is, folks, is every time something hits the news, we seem to run to that cause. Let's look at all the things that are going on. Alcoholism uh, deaths was only number t was right behind on uh, one of the charts to uh, gun-related accidents and so forth. So um, let's think about what our behaviors are, what we're uh, encouraging young folks to do. And as grandparents, I know we have a lot of seniors watching. Sometimes we look the other way. We are generous. Uh, we encourage drinking sometimes. But I would caution us to, to educate them. Now, that's my one act of randomness. Read on the way back from the beach that day, because Barb and I went to Florida this since I've seen you last. And uh, we went down there to console the family and so forth. And so uh, before going to, to visit with the family a second day, I was down to the beach walking, trying to just reflect on the whole situation. I'm walking back up from the, the little walkway between the beach and the hotel. And there's this family, and there's a couple of kids. And this one little girl was sort of falling behind and, and getting slower and slower, and I'm walking. And, you know, you don't want to come up on a family because you have appropriateness and personal space. And this little girl intentionally slows up, and she, she's walking stride for stride with me. Well, the next thing I know, she turns right over to me. She looks at me, and she puts out her hand and says, Here, this is for you. And it's a seashell. She, I don't know this child from anywhere. And in that moment, I, I said, thank you so much. And it was just a random act of kindness. So my random act of, act of kindness to all of you today is peace in your lives. Find something that's, that's peaceful, share that with others, and have a good new year. Back to you, Reed. Well said. Thank you, John Hamels. Doc. Uh, yeah, it's well taken. And uh, that little girl is just something, a sweetness in life that happens to us from time to time. And uh, let's, let's hope there's more of that. We have our two guests who I'm sure are, are, are not positive they're ever going to get on the air, <laughs> Diane Hannum and Ida <coughs> Klan, who are um, uh, members of one's executive director, Diane, and Ida is a community outreach person. And they're going to talk a little bit about the Northern Chautauqua Community Foundation, which a lot of people are not aware of, or a lot of people are not sure what they do, or they're going to tell you. So I just want to open up today uh, with you, Diane, and say, uh, first of all, where do you hail from? You hail from around here or Idaho or where? No, I grew up in Pittsburgh, but uh, I'm very glad to right now be living in Fredonia. Okay, well, I was uh, born and raised in Westfield, but I, I actually had a long, much of my family is in Pittsburgh, and I've spent a lot of time down there. Matter of fact, I went to the inverted mine, the... Uh, a uh, great, huge, 39-story uh, building there, that uh, the Cathedral of Learning. Oh, that's a wonderful uh, place. Well, I, I was just a, a kid out of uh, Westfield when I went there, 
And I was totally over overwhelmed and awed. And I remember my first contact is I had a class. I went into the uh, Cathedral of Learning and got in an elevator. And I said, uh, fifth floor, please. Some guy was uh, punching me. He said, it doesn't stop till the 18th. Oh. So shot up the 18th. Got on it, and stayed on it, and shot back down to the ground floor. Walked out and oh. headed home. I said, oh. "Okay, I'm not ready for this." Oh. But uh, eventually, I did turn around, and go back, and face the music. And I had a very happy couple of years there, and learned to play chess. Good, it's a good place to be. Pittsburgh, the Steel City, um, used to be so dirty with the coal that they mm -hmm. burned for the uh, steel. I remember the window sills were always black yep. if you left your window open. And uh, they've cleaned that up pretty well. It's really nice, a lot better now. Um, so the, you're up here in Fredonia, and uh, you're involved with Ida. And Ida, where do you come from? Where do you Well, here? I was born in here in, in Westfield. I was born oh, okay. In Westfield. I lived there for. That's six why years. you look familiar. <laughs> Under the bridge, we were <laughs> trolls. <laughs> uh, well, and you know, uh, you, then you'd remember <laughs> Old Eve. He lived under the bridge. Old Eve. Yeah, I had, Old Eve was a black fellow who had no real home. And he used to, they, they used to have salt under the bridge, the viaduct, which goes right through the middle of Westfield there. Right. And uh, they'd, he'd, he'd pile up the salt and make himself a little room. And he, that's oh, where wow. he stayed. And uh, come winter, of course, it was in, in, uninhabitable. So he used to, to just throw a brick through a window and they put him in the slammer for the winter. <laughs> and after a while, he didn't have to go through the routine. They all were ready for him and they'd give him a place to stay over in Westfield, in Mayville, in the jail. He didn't care. Hmm. So he got three squares and everything. And uh, he was sort of a tradition and a very well-known person in Westfield. <laughs> I'll have to see if my parents know him. <laughs> oh, they'll sure remember old Eve. That's what we call him. Ephraim was his name, Ephraim Nothing. something, but uh, we all, always called him Eve. And uh, so you were born in Westfield, and then uh, did you go to school there? No, we moved to Fredonia when uh -huh. I was six. Um, lived there for until I graduated, and then moved to East Otto. It was East Otto? Yes, lived there for 36 years. East Otto, East Otto, where is that? Um, in Cattaraugus County, um, between Springville and Ellicottville. Okay. Cattaraugus, you know, I've heard of Cattaraugus County, somewhere <laughs> around here, out there. <laughs> uh, um, uh, praise the Lord, it's an agricultural county, as is Chautauqua, and we've yes. finally been re, re uh, gerrymandered back into an agricultural yes. congressional seat, yes. which we didn't have before. It used to be, uh, the, the, uh, not too long ago, the vice president, uh, uh, called, made a quick phone call with uh, uh, the cons with the help and aid of uh, uh, oh everybody in the Washington crowd, and they changed us and put us in with Buffalo. We didn't have a chance in Buffalo of ever having a congressman again. We used to have Dan Reed, incidentally. Now that Tom Reed's there, and they're no relation, but Dan Correct. Reed was the head of the Ways and Means uh, uh, com Committee, which was the most powerful and still is committee in the uh, United States. Uh, Congress, and he could uh, he basically pass or block anything that would go through, period. That's, that's his power. He gave us a beautiful harbor front down in Westfield, New York. Mm -hmm. That's the Dan Reed uh, Harbor. <coughs> All right, so here we go. Uh, you guys, said, now did you establish this or you just come in and start working for them? Where they were already ready? The uh, Northern, the, I'll call it the NCCF, the Northern uh, Chautauqua Community Foundation which is a mouthful so early in the morning. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're on and off and running. What is this organization? What, what did you come in for? Well, I've been with the Community Foundation for about 18 years, but the foundation was founded in 1986 by a wonderful group of community-minded individuals. And the Community Foundation is here to help the community, to give grants and scholarships, to support nonprofits, and to give donors a chance to give back to the community. Okay, well, I guess that puts it in a nutshell. Thank you for showing up. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, Thank we, you for we, having we, us. Now yes. we'll move right along. <laughs> uh, I'm kidding. Um, what, are your, what are your exact uh, roles here? Now, I understand you give money, as you said, to foundations. You try to make this county a better place to live. That's the whole major function here. Um, I see you, give, uh, you gave away eight big grants recently. Uh, I give them a, a quick outline of who you gave them to, if you can remember offhand. Some of them, anyway. Well, we have a list here, so that makes it easy. <laughs> okay. Uh, we gave a grant to literacy volunteers of Ch Chautauqua County, Chadwick Bay Development Corps. Now, how much money did you give? Do you remember? Um, I can tell you two 
$2,500 to literacy volunteers. Uh -huh. That's a nice chunk of dough. It is. Well, $10,000 to the Chadwick Bay Development Corps, no, which a, was a very large grant for it, us. Yeah, it's in Dunkirk, right? Well, it's, it's all of the communities um, in the Chadwick Bay area. Okay. The Historical Lighthouse, the Dunkirk Historical Lighthouse received a grant. Chautauqua County Historical Society, which is right nearby in Westfield. Uh, the Forestville Food Pantry, Chautauqua County Rural Ministry, and Chautauqua Striders. And I think we gave just over $30,000 to those organizations in total. Okay, what are the Striders? Chautauqua Striders does tutoring uh, for our young people. Okay, are they all over the county then? Apparently, yes. Huh? Mm -hmm. oh, that's a great grant. Uh, I think the, uh, the, the education of our children is probably, as John said, one of the most important things. And, Remind them never to drink and drive. Oh. Holy mackerel. <laughs> I had to throw that in. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and don't uh, shoot your gun when you're drunk. <laughs> right. Oh. Well, uh, okay, guys. Um, if you are, if say I were an organization, nonprofit organization, I needed some dough, what do I do? Well, we have three, actually, three grant programs throughout the year. Um, the Environmental Grants Program and the Community Benefits Program, which is a um, biannual, we give those out twice a year, and um, every other year we have the Community Pride Grant. What you would need to do if you're a nonprofit interested in applying for a grant would be to go to our website, um, nccf, nccfoundation.org, and we have all the uh, forms on there, the requirements, and it's a good site, it's informational. Or you could call um, Eileen Dunn, who is our Grants Program Director. She um, can help you with the requirements and what's needed to get the pro process started. And uh, do you have to be big or small or how? What, what are the... Uh, Most of them limit? you just have to be a 503... 501C3. 501C3. Organization. That means tax exempt. You Correct. have to have your A non profit tax exempt. Right. You have to have charitable. Your, your, uh, charitable. Right. Yeah, you have to have your paperwork. Yes. Uh, so it wouldn't go to the uh, uh, the Reed Power Show? <laughs> Senior <laughs> report with Reed Power? Well, we do have the um, community pride <coughs> grants. You can be a garden club uh -huh. or a social organization. You can apply for the environment or the community pride grants. Okay. And that we do have this year. Um, that's the process is due um, March 1st. So if you're interested in that, those programs are um, to uh, support clean, attractive neighborhoods, well-maintained parks, signage, and other projects that promote pride in Chautauqua County. That's senior report for sure. Okay. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so those, those types of grants, you don't necessarily have to be a, a tax-exempt organization. Okay, there you go. So you do uh, cover a wide span of uh, we do. programming and areas. Uh, let me ask you another thing. Uh, how long does the grant go on for? Is it a limited thing? Is it for a year, or is it just a chunk of money here? Well, it is in some ways just a chunk of money, but uh -huh. you can have a project that lasts one year, a project that lasts two years, or sometimes it's just getting a new piece of equipment. Like for the rural ministry, we gave them funds to get a rototiller for their agricultural programs. They have some really nice um, food programs, a gleaning program and the like to get fresh produce to their constituents. Yes. Um, I. Uh I know a farmer over in Fredonia, uh, name is Richards, and boy, he is so generous. He lets you glean, and most people don't even uh, are not familiar right. with the, mm -hmm. the term glean, mm -hmm. but uh, gleaning is uh, when you actually finish the crop. There's still a lot of fruit and vegetables left, and they just drop off eventually and rot. But if you permit gleaning, people who are hungry can go in and pick what's left. And, Peppers in particular, they go on long after they're mm -hmm. uh, they're still Into good the long fall. after the even after the frosts. They won't sell them, but they're still good. And tomatoes, there's usually tons of tomatoes that continue to ripen on a tomato crop, and all sorts of other things, beans and whatever. They pick them, but they're always more blossoming and growing. And but the end, there's still a few left. And uh, it's just great to go into a field and pick all the fruit and vegetables that you can believe in are, are existent and give them to the local churches where right. they donate them to the right. people that need them. Uh, the food banks, of course. Mm -hmm. And I see you did have a food bank you helped out. Uh, Rototiller. You know, they're, uh, 
it's wonderful. The West, uh, the uh, Chautauqua County used to have a uh, uh, what they called the old folks home, but it was actually a, a uh, the predecessor to the county uh, uh, nursing home, oh. and it used to be over in Dewickville, and it was called the County Farm. And uh, people, indigent seniors, were sent there and had a place to stay uh, as long as they were alive. Uh, they cared for them until they needed real hospital care, and uh, they raised their own crops. Great. They they went out and raised, uh, the, uh, road tilled up the fields and yeah. raised uh, all kinds of food, which tended uh, to grow. Of course, the nursing home now doesn't have a, no. <laughs> a crop program, but I am assuming that people do give anyway from time to time. Now, um, if uh, uh, say a small organization says we're in a desperate emergency uh, we don't have time to file for that grant everything do you, can you help them in any way sure they can go right to our board of directors and ask for a distribution some another way we help organizations is they can set up their own endowment fund and that way they'll have a steady stream of income from that fund it's really a, a good way to create some stability in your nonprofit organization okay great uh, Diane, uh, I've been talking to you a lot. Let's talk to Ida sure. for a second. I, she's got her hand up. She wants to say something. So you're on. <laughs> there you go. You're on. Oh, okay. Well, besides the community pride grants, the environmental grants, and our community benefit grants, um, DFT and Lakeshore also have uh, funding programs through us where organizations can apply to them for grants. Um, that's something that you could also contact Eileen Dunn concerning and she could give you the information on that. Um, other areas that there's funding is uh, different uh, towns like the Silver Creek Irving um, Heritage Fund. They have a fund that takes care of their community. There's the um, Irving, or Ripley, Ripley, mm -hmm. Ripley Fund, and Westfield is starting back up their fund. So those are other areas that communities can go to to get help. And how yeah. are they related to you? Uh, hold on, John, uh, hold that call. Uh, we'll be right with the caller. Thank you. Uh, they can contact us, um, and we can give them the information to contact the different organizations in the towns okay. to help them out. Uh -huh. Now, uh, there is a lot of dough around when you think of in terms of ten thousand or two thousand dollar grants but chautauqua county is a very very poor county there's we're not like the southern counties down around new york and long island and westchester and up there the where, needs are great and uh, the needs are greater even because i think we're one of the poorest counties uh in terms of income in the uh state so it's very important for us to have this funding available also Sadly, I'm, I'm, I can't help but notice we're the highest tax county in uh, New York. It's just, it's, it's really, we, we're really suffering up here. And any help we can get is very important, especially from our legislators. And uh, let's, let's hope we get more funding. Um, we do have a phone call now, and I, I, I wanted to say that, then we're on. You, are you ready? You want to take a call? Sure. Hey, caller, thank you for waiting. Good morning, good morning. Um, I, I'm confused. Where does this money come from? How does it work? How does somebody start one of these funds? Who watches the money? I mean, how do I know my money's safe? Can you, can you help explain how this all works? That's a whole lot of questions, but we'd be glad to answer. Where Thank does you. the money come from first? Where does the money come from? The money comes from individuals, from businesses, from families who want to make a difference in the community, who want to help the community. Um, we already talked about how you access it. What were some of the other questions? Uh, who's watching you? Who's watching us? Well, we are, we have been approved by a national organization called the Council on Foundations. We've passed their st set of standards, which means that we're, um, we have the due diligence, we have the, all the I's dotted and the T's crossed uh, to be a charitable organization. And we're proud of that. Um, we're run by, a board of directors, all volunteer, and by committees, uh, investment committee, grants committee, administration committee, and they're all volunteers as well. So we really are a community organization. We have a staff of three part-time, or three full-time rather, and two part-time 
but we have about 75 volunteers who, who run the organization. How much dough goes roughly to the, to the uh, paid staff? To the paid staff? Yeah. Well, our total operating budget is under doo -doo -doo, just over two hundred thousand dollars. Two hundred grand. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that uh, includes everything, rent and and telephone and all our utilities and uh -huh. such. And salaries, of course. Yep, salaries. Um, uh, and how much do you give out annually, roughly? It must be a pretty good chunk. In twenty twelve, we gave out about three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And that you ever you do you do grants every month or every week or every uh, Take that. how often? We do the community benefit. Um, the community benefit grants mm -hmm. twice a year. There's the environmental grant, um, and like I said, the community pride is every other year. But there's family funds also that are set up where the money, the, the base money stays with the foundation. And the interest earned on that fund, the people can designate where that goes. And some people have them going to the 1891 Opera House to the Humane Society to different organizations so every quarter or however they have it set up money gets transferred to those organizations so funding actually does happen throughout the year and through our grants program okay another question is how, how do you start a fund it's easy it's very easy to start a fund uh -huh. um, you contact us we have a very brief um, agreement that we sign and the donor signs and what you do is you tell us you give us provisions for the fund you say I want the income to go to this organization or I want you to decide and give it to the most pressing needs of the community um, it's very easy you give us a call there are minimums to set up a fund but we give donors between three five years even longer to set up the fund to, to get it built to the minimum rather I'd like to start a fund for stray cats. Hey. There's so many stray cats and the poor things, nobody cares for them. <laughs> Believe it or not, we just had in the fall a wonderful woman come in and set up a fund called Fix Your Feline Fund. And this is to help low-income individuals get their cats spayed and neutered with the intention of controlling the cat population. So we do have a fund for cats and we have Lakeshore Humane Society, Chautauqua County Humane Society, uh, both have funds with us and get their income on a quarterly or yearly basis. There's quite a, a crowd over in Westfield too. They even have a store yes. now uh, for stray cats. Yep. And uh, well, I, I, I just want, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I give them a nice donation every year. And of course, stray, stray dogs. Mm -hmm. Also, you got to remember them. There's so many stray dogs that just kicked out and but not like cats, they have a whole bunch uh, of them out and then the cats reproduce, you have litters and you have just sadly a huge number of wild cats running around yes. who are very hard to domesticate. Uh, so it does good, it does good. You give money to everything and everybody. Um, schools, do you help schools in any way? Now you said there's a Strider program? Well there's the Strider program plus the, the schools can apply for grants. We've given Brockton several grants to do environmental programs. Um, they did the Slippery Rock Creek Project and the Environmental Change Project. So, so the schools can apply for some of our grants and scholarships. And scholarships. And scholarships. We give out 200 and almost 250 scholarships a year to students throughout uh, northern Chautauqua County. You say northern Chautauqua. How about Jamestown Southern? Well, we handle mostly the schools in this area. And, and there is a community foundation that serves uh, the greater Jamestown area, and that's our friends, the Chautauqua Region Community Foundation. Okay. They're a wonderful organization. Mm -hmm. So, you, but you're the Northern Chautauqua. That's right. Community Foundation. Uh, is there anybody out there who wants to give large sums of money? Sometimes you get a some a philanthropist who has like millions who wants to give we you real do. dough. We do. We do. In fact, our largest fund was set up by Ruth Barker Winch. It's a scholarship fund and it gives scholarships to 11 districts in northern Chautauqua County. Uh, but a, a popular way for people to give, particularly the larger gifts, is through a bequest, through a gift through your will um, or your estate plan that you give after you pass. Some people aren't ready to give a donation now. They're worried about their, their funds lasting their lifetime. 
So they leave a bequest, and that's typically where our larger gifts come from. How do you set up a bequest? Well, Putting a will, or what do you do? That's fairly easy. You talk to your estate planner uh -huh. or your lawyer. You can name the foundation as a beneficiary in your 401k, your life insurance. It's a fairly, fairly simple process, and um, all it takes is signing the paper that says, you know, you'd like a portion of your um, estate to go to the Northern Chautauqua Community Foundation after you pass. And, and you can also designate what you want it to go to. Definitely. Like if I wanted to send some dough in for cats, That's <laughs> it right. would go to stray cat organizations, right? And what many people don't appreciate is that, or don't realize, is that you don't have to be a millionaire to be a philanthropist. I imagine there are people in your audience who remembered David Duino, who was our first uh, executive director. And he always used to say, you don't need to be a millionaire to be a philanthropist. You can leave $50 to the foundation, you can leave $500,000 to the foundation, and people do. It's all different amounts that, that make up our endowments. Yes, I was watching the news recently, and one of our uh, wits, not wits, but one of the masterfully intelligent people on the air, which is few and far between these days in my book, did make a comment. He said, it's not uh, not a sin to be rich, it's a sin to die rich. You should you use go. that money and give it mm -hmm. out and, and make people happy and great and so what? If so you die, what are you on, soup and bread? You don't care. Right, <laughs> right. We're, we're sitting here chatting with Diane Hannum and Ida Klan, who are representatives of the uh, Northern Chautauqua Community Foundation. They uh, do a, a, a wonderful job of helping out our county by basically drumming up money from the community, from people who uh, want to make the community a better place. And they, they haul in a, a 300 grand's worth of, uh, at least it's currently, of uh, dough, which they parcel out to various people who, re who uh, ask for it. I assume most of the people that request money will get a little money, won't they? Well, depending on the program, yes. Uh, scholarships of course there that's a competitive process mm -hmm. but again what people might not realize is that scholarships don't always go to the students who has a 4.0 average there are scholarships for every type of student scholarships who excel in music or art or sports so don't feel like because you're not a 4.0 student you're not eligible uh, check with your guidance counselor and I'm sure there'll be something for you that's a great gift. Well, how much are the scholarships? Just like our grants, they're anywhere from fifty dollars to our largest is about five thousand uh dollars, -huh. and that's a continuing scholarship that you receive throughout your undergraduate career. Sounds it reminds me a little bit of the the heap from five, the heap fund, okay. which is for heat. Right? Uh, people who are indigent don't have any money for heat. Uh, the average grant is fifty dollars. <laughs> Uh, I have a wood burner. I heat with a wood burner, and mm -hmm. I requested some uh, assistance. And they did send me. They sent me a log. Oh. <laughs> I'm only kidding. They, they sent me two logs. Oh yeah. <laughs> Lucky you. Okay. So at any rate, your foundation's out there doing the job. Um, if uh, I don't know, if you ran out of money, what do you do? <laughs> Can you take a loan, or how do you keep the grants going and things? Well, we're designed to be in perpetuity. We're designed to last forever. The funds that we hold are in endowment form, which means that we just spend the income. So our current assets are just over $19 million. We invest that money. The income from that money is put back into the community. Uh, we've been around for 26 years now, and we'll be around for another 26, another 100 years. Uh, as I said, we're designed to last forever. Oh. Forever, I've got some bad news. We're not going to make it to forever. You don't think? Uh, the sun is going to explode and consume us in flames in about a billion years. Oh. You know? <laughs> bye bye, a foundation. Yeah. You know? <laughs> okay, well, I'm uh, kidding, of course. The, uh, I'm not kidding. The sun is going to blow us all away someday. Eventually, eventually. Yeah, according to the scientists. Uh, if you uh, had your wishes, what would you wish for? Another millionaire or what? Gosh. Or I think 
this time, after the week we've had, we'd wish for jobs in Chautauqua County. Yeah. Um, with well, we Petrie closing and raw core cutting jobs. Right. That's a, a big, big concern. 400 jobs down that's, the tubes and right up here in the northern county. Right. That's Between Petrie and the carriage house. And those four, are going to be hard to replace. How do you replace them? And uh, th there was a long editorial uh, in the, there was a short editorial, I should say, in the uh, uh, Dunkirk Disturber telling us, you know, very simply that uh, if you don't think this has something to do with taxes, you, you better look at it again, you know? Mm -hmm. We're so highly taxed here. People are going to hike their skirts up and run, run for their lives, all the businesses, at this rate. Oh, I hope not. We've got to do something about it. Hey, caller, I'm sorry to hold you up. You're on. Good morning, Reed. Good morning, ladies. Um, I'm calling from Jamestown. I'm watching you down here. Uh, okay, great. We're on li live again, huh? You're live. Okay. Looking good. Um, yeah, well, the gremlins uh, got in and messed us up last week. <laughs> yeah, went to the test phases from when I, when I contacted Channel 5, so uh -huh. uh, it should kick in here pretty good. Good. Um, my question is, now being in Jamestown, um, you, could you tell me where I would go to the foundation in Jamestown, uh, their address, and who had contact? Sure, they're on Spring Street, uh, the old um, National Fuel Building, I believe. But Randy Sweeney is their executive director, and their website is crcfonline.org. Repeat that, would you? Yep, it's crcfonline.org. And they do a wonderful job of, of helping the people, the students, the nonprofit organizations in the greater Jamestown area. Now, do you guys combine, I mean, with donations and do you put all your money together or? From time to time, we'll uh, work together on a particular project, a countywide project. Something we were talking about earlier today was our amazing county project we did two years ago where we were promoting what an amazing county we live in. We did that together. And oftentimes we'll fund the same organization. We're in constant contact with them and we collaborate as much as we can. They're our dear friends. I do miss that amazing county. I remember playing that on the uh, internet and I mean it was it was fun. I mean I wish even without prizes I'd love to see that come back. There was a lot of work that was put into that. Um, it was our pleasure to do it. We're glad you enjoyed it. And I'm talking about jobs. Uh, I was reading the bad news about the Dunkard area. A couple of years ago, I worked in uh, Jamestown at a food service company that uh, they moved out of the area. Um, it was bad, you know, promise of lots of jobs. And um, the ones that got to go, they went to two, two different companies. The ones that went south to the Pittsburgh company just took a beating. They just lied to them so bad that they had like a lawsuit against them. But, uh, I'm hoping, you know, that something works out for the people at Carriage, Carriage House, I'm sorry, and Petrie up there. Uh, company's been around forever, especially I think Petrie there, um, been eating their food forever. So uh, hopefully something will come out with these big companies. They don't seem to care about anybody except, you know, themselves. So Yeah, you're right, uh, caller, because uh, there, there's kind of a new corporate game on. Not so new, but uh, there, it's, it's becoming more and more uh, pro uh, prominent. And that is a, uh, a company buys out another company and shuts it down, fires everybody. And then they rehire them immediately. They reopen under a different name and they bring them in from uh, basically uh, nothing. You know, they give them a very no, no uh, salary to speak of like they used to get and they cut them sharply on their, uh, their benefits. And it's, it's a money maker for them, but it's, it's a disaster for everybody who works for them. I agree on that. I mean, their company what they do, did was they buy out and sell, and what they do just before they uh, shut down a company is they'll bring in probably a million dollars of brand new equipment that can be moved to one of their other companies, write it off on their taxes, and I mean, that's how they, that's how they do it. It's sort of... Pretty sneaky, huh? Oh, no, it's really bad. I, I blame the government just as much as the company for letting them do it. But, I, uh, uh, I agree. Our Congress is, is not protecting the middle class. And they are basically allowing the uh, rich and powerful to ride over everybody. And this is one example of it. Well, thank you, caller. Uh, if you send me a stamped uh, self-addressed envelope, I'll give you five bucks off over at the Lakeview, that beautiful little restaurant at the foot of the hill here in Mayville, New York. Well, thank you very much, and uh, have a great show, and you're looking good here again in Jamestown. Well, thanks again. Glad to be alive and well down there. <laughs>
That means we blanket the the county, and we have such wonderful access people. You know, they most of uh, most of the access people, almost all of them, work for next to nothing. You know, mm. if they get a get any kind of a stipend, it's it's like a you know a minimum wage type thing with no benefits. A labor uh, of love. And it's a labor of love. Like here, everybody works for nothing. This is uh, this is all volunteer. Uh, we're the only. Uh, Incidentally, Access that has uh, in Chautauqua County has a live program now, and uh, the only one in the state that has a hour-long live senior call-in program. Mm -hmm. So hey, we're 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 drumming yeah. up business here in, in Mayville, New York. Access Five, thank you very much, Chuck Kelsey, <laughs> among other people. He used to be uh, in the government here in Mayville. He was the town village clerk, and uh, then he retired. And he started this program. He had to snatch it from. Uh, uh, other people who were, w wouldn't give it up but weren't using this particular oh. st station. So hmm. he actually uh, almost went to war uh, in court to get it, but they, they finally coughed it up and he, he activated it. Okay. Chuck Kelsey, you are a terrific guy and you work so hard for your community, as does everybody who works for access all over the county and all over the state and all over the world, I guess, whatever it's a great it is. great program. Chatting with uh, Northern Chautauqua Community Foundation, which is a grant granting organization. They, they bring in money from local philanthropy and uh, they stash it, they, they bank it, they, they use it, they give it, and they uh, have many programs to give out dough. Uh, the executive director is Diane Hannum. And the person who does the community outreach is Ida Klein, and she's very active here today, but she's been pretty quiet. So say something <laughs> yeah. to us. Say something, Ida. Well, we're going to be out in the community this year um, uh -huh. at the Chautauqua County Fair. I did want to mention that. Last year was our first year. We had a booth there. We gave out $1,100 in grants. Where was this now? At the Chautauqua County Fair. How about that? Yes, yeah, we had a, a contest where people could put in their name and their favorite nonprofit, and every day we had a drawing for a $100 grant. And then on Sunday, we had a drawing for a $500 grant, and we gave money to the Humane Society, to literacy volunteers, the YWCA in Westfield, to 4-H. YMCA and <laughs> YWCA in Westfield. It used to be a YMCA there, too where the key bank is, and it was very active. All the, all the boys used to hang out there and learn to play basketball and dodgeball and play pool. <laughs> <laughs> and we, uh, that disappeared, but we still have the YWCA, which is very active. It used to be a, a, a home for young ladies. Uh, yes. They had apartments there and little rooms, and everybody uh, who didn't have a place to stay, a young lady, could uh, stay there for a very low cost. Uh, I'm actually on the board of directors for the YWCA. Oh, are you? Yes. And the w most wonderful thing I think they do is they provide a home for the seniors in Westfield. That's a wonderful gift. Oh, they do. It's a place where the seniors it's can go. Meet. Yes. And uh, they meet. You have a nice kitchen. You have everything set up there beautifully. Yes. So they rent out the facilities if anybody needs. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Uh, Sorry. Here, here, here's a free, <laughs> here, here, here's a free ad. Go ahead. <laughs> to tell them about it, where it is, and how much it costs. Well, it's on Portage Street. I'm not sure of the cost. You just have to give the YWCA a call. But they do rent out the kitchen and and the facilities, and they even have rooms to rent. And they have a huge apartment. I mean, a huge parking lot. Yes, they do. And a number of apartments. And, and they have daycare and. And they have a beautiful cliff out back. <laughs> <laughs> That's some cliff. Yeah. Actually, it's, it's tiered. I noticed there was a picnic table a little ways down at one oh. time. Uh, it's a, a nice place for rent if you need it. And uh, the rent is very, I'm sure, very Reasonable. low. It's, well, it's a Christian organization. You're not going to beat anybody to death. Right. Uh, here I am rattling along. We have a couple of phone calls. You want to take one? Sure. Okay. I'd love to. Good morning, Carla. You're on. Good morning. Um, I have a question for your, your guest. Sure. Um, I'm from the Westfield Ripley uh, Brockton area, mm -hmm. and I was wondering if through your organization there are grants or so forth available, and if so, what are they, what kind are they? Well, certainly there are grants available for <clears throat> Westfield, for Ripley, for the Brockton area. <clears throat> Excuse me, we have scholarships that benefit all of those areas. Anybody what type of scholarships? Scholarships for graduating high school students going on to college and some going on to trade school as well. And now how would they apply for these? Typically they go through their guidance department at the school. Uh, we have an annual report, I have a copy with me here, 
And <clears throat> if you call our office, we'll send you a copy, and it lists all of the scholarships that we currently hold. And I think, as I'd already said, we gave out about 250 scholarships last year, and we expect to do the same, if not a few more, this now, year. Now, if the students went to the guidance office, <clears throat> the guidance office would have that information also? Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. Well, That's thank you, caller. Does very that, interesting to know. Does that, uh, is that you piqued curiosity? Did it take care of it? <laughs> it certainly did. It certainly did. And uh, you're doing an excellent job. And thank you so much for what you do for our uh, okay. community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank well, you. Uh, well uh, aside a note, one of the uh, beautiful ladies out here uh, who had quite a bit of dough was Ruth Winch. That's right. And she's a Westfield lady. Yep. And. Uh, so there's some of the money emanated from there. Now, she gave you a sizable grant, did she not? She left a few million dollars to us for scholarship. Okay, there you go. Thank you, Ruth Winch. Uh, you, you really have benefited our community. And uh, she gave other funding out, too, to other organizations. She was very generous. It's a and, wonderful uh, lady. Quite a lady. I knew her in passing when I was a kid in Westfield. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You know? Chatting with the Northern Chautauqua Community Foundation gives money out. If you have an organization, you need money, give them a rattle. Uh, they will give money even if you're incorporated or not, taxable, non-taxable, whatever it is, you can find some cash or reno here if you qualify and if you're needy. Uh, give them a phone number, would you please, if they wanted to get in touch with you. Most people just call you up. 716-366-4892. And you can also go to our website, no. nccfoundation.org. N-C-C-F or just N-C-C? N-C-C-Foundation.org. Okay, N-C-C-Foundation, one word, I'm sure. And we are on Facebook, and I even have a Twitter <laughs> <laughs> account. I'm still new at it. Social networking, <laughs> so, so incredible. Uh, Facebook is by far the, the widest and best known and most used in the world. And they're everywhere in the world now, excepting for China, Russia, and North Korea, or, some, uh -huh. some, or Iran, I think it is Iran. I, okay. They didn't mention North Korea, but Iran. <laughs> oh, they'll get in eventually, because, you know, they want to hear the whispers, <laughs> what's sure. going on about them, you know? Uh, <clears throat> if, uh, finally, if somebody uh, wanted to go to work with you guys as a volunteer, uh -huh. uh, what would they do? What would <clears throat> they be doing? Again, they would contact us. We have a number of, of committees. We have a grants committee that really does a super job in determining who gets uh, funding from the foundation. They're all volunteer, as I said, and they go out and do site visits uh, for each of the applicants. We also have an investment committee, an administration committee. We have something called voting members, and those individuals, they only get together about once a year but they're charged with electing new board members, new voting members, with approving our audit, um, any changes in our bylaws, and we have 50 voting members. So that's a good way to kind of get your feet wet with the foundation. And again, give us a call or visit our website and we'd, we'd welcome uh, your volunteer hours. You have 75 now, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of volunteers. It is. A lot of good it people is. giving to the, to the community. <coughs> How, um, how many grants you get a year, requests? Roughly, uh, uh, ballpark sure figure. How many requests? 10 million, uh, 50. <laughs> <laughs> we awarded 185 last year in total. Uh -huh. uh, we receive, for a typical grants round, we'll get between 20 and 30, and award between 10 and 15. Um, there is a process to go through. Um, what The only thing we require to get your foot in the door is to send a letter of interest, we call it. So you set a let, send a letter of interest telling us who you are, what you're looking for funds for, how many people will benefit, and a brief budget, really just a page, a page and a half. And from there, our grants committee selects uh, organizations to submit a fuller application. Okay, well, thank you. I just got this message from the... Uh, and we're down to our last five minutes. Oh. Then we're out of here. They're just okay. going to whip us out of here. Okay. So uh, if you wanted to sort of round up, uh, uh, take a minute apiece uninterrupted and just uh, chat a little. Well, there's other ways that you can also help the foundation. Um, to free up money for grants, we do have a membership program where you can become a member 
of the foundation. We have individual and business memberships. That money goes exclusively to running the foundation. So by doing that, we have more money available uh, to give out for grants. This is just so. to join the um, foundation. Right. You give them right. a, a free shirt. <laughs> and a free bag and some juice. There a free bag go. and some juice. Yeah, we've got <laughs> some here. Who, 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 what, where did that juice come from? It came from Cot, and it's the wonderful Westfield made juice. Okay. It's very good. And uh, it's still available in the supermarket? Can you buy it over there? I know you can get it at Tuscany, um, some of the smaller supermarkets okay, around. Okay, there you go. we got to give them a hand good stuff. For, yes, uh, yes. for their gift. They are uh, giving little prizes out to many organizations, including yours. Mm -hmm. And it is, it's a kindness. It's grape juice, friends. It's uh, good uh, grape uh, juice. Uh, Very good. Concord grape juice, I'm mm -hmm. sure. It is. You know, the Chinese put in 500 million acres or something like that of Concord grapes. Oh, really? Yeah, and they're just coming to fruition. Mm -hmm. And so I suspect it's going to hit the price a little bit. I hope mm -hmm. not, because I'm, I'm sure American Concord grapes are better. <laughs> I'm, I'm certain. Chautauqua County, the best. And they're probably taller, too. You know. <laughs> uh, had a nice chat so far with uh, Diane Hannum and Ida Klein, who are representatives of the Northern Chautauqua Community Foundation. We're kind of wrapping up now, and I would like to say that it's been a pleasure having you here. And will you come back sometime? Oh, we'd love we'll see to. See how you're too. doing. And see, see if uh, we found another really generous Ruth Winch and people like that who, mm -hmm. who really have the dough and they use it yeah. for good works. You're right. Uh, you are probably the greatest uh, sons and sisters, sons and daughters of God, because you are praising the Lord not by just piety but good works. Mm, thank Very you. important, the good works. We've had a nice chat with Diane Hannum, who's the executive director of Northern Chautauqua Community Foundation, and Ida Klan, who does the community relation uh, part of it. I hope that you, uh, if you're interested in a grant, and it's very likely you will get one if you have any kind of a pro project going that is uh, of need and interest. And I'm going to ask them to give you one more time a phone number. You put this phone number down and call in, and it just may be worth thousands of dollars to you. Here you go. That's right. Our phone number is 366-4892, and the deadlines for applications, the environmental program is next week, the January 10th, and for community pride and community grants, it is March 1st, which will be here before you know it. So again, we encourage applications, and we encourage phone calls. Okay. March 1st is coming. So is March 17th. You know what that is? St. Patrick's Day. St. Patty's Day. Day. Oh, yeah. do we have fun in my family. <laughs> you should see how we do the dance. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if, if well, I'm not going to go what we do with our, our dearly beloved who passed away recently. <laughs> but, all right, guys. I want to say thank you to some really super special people. Chuck Kelsey, Devin Taylor, Chris Burt, Randy Burt, Jeff Zook, Chris Ramaker, Don Zenz, and last but not least, John Hamill's Doc. Thank you for joining us. No, thank you for I, having us. We certainly wish you a wonderful, prosperous new year over there. Thank you. May you get lots of grants coming in, and may all that is proud and true and noble abide with you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank I'm you for Reed having Powers. us.